So finally, we have Dagon Wampa 3, and we start seeing off with the future side. And I gotta say, this right here was one heck of a first episode, but I also has like some questions that I do hope can be answered, and I do hope that they will be answered. Now we all know that this right here was a sequel to Dagon Wampa 2, so I would imagine that the story is now following that, and I can hope but wonder because we all saw that the Rhythm of Despair. They were all back and they were like causing trouble and so obviously that right there isn't good because if we all play too, we know what happened at the end and so right now I'm wondering did they all go back to how they used to be because if that right there is the case, you know, right now I do feel kind of bad because I freaking love the characters in 2 and I was so happy with the ending that I thought that we might have a hopeful one. But it turns out things don't work like that because they have all gone back to, to the way they were because we saw our characters and we even saw some of the ones who we thought were gone for good. They actually came back and so I'm wondering like what in the world is going on. But at the same time, I also was like very happy to see our characters, you know, we're back even if they are back in their despair like form I guess you can say but also I had no idea that Mekon and the uh Ultimate Dancer, you know, the one who was like that little girl in two. I had no idea that these two were like so close when they were remnants because we saw Mekon having a concert and then we had the dancing girl giving up a performance while doing that. And also we saw the Ultimate Imposter and, uh, and right now I do have some mixed feelings about that because I want to see who the person really is. But at the same time, I was like dying laughing where we saw a fat Biakia actually running like this guy is like pretty freaking fit. So I do wonder what's like going on with that. We also saw the ultimate mechanic like building a giant Monokuma. And we also have, uh, what's that girl named? The ultimate nurse. Hopefully I'm not getting her name mixed up. The ultimate nurse, I forgot what her name was. Uh, the ultimate, oh, you know what? I did get her name mixed up because uh, because Megan, she was the ultimate nurse. But pretty much, like, I, well, I meant the ultimate rocker and dancer. Like, those two were the ones who I meant were by getting close. But we saw Megan, like, trapping someone in. And we saw her getting ready to stick a needle in someone's eye. But at the same time, we saw someone stop her. And that right there was actually one of the members of the, of the uh, Future Foundation. It's the one who has her mouth covered up. So I do wonder if they go to trade her because why else would she be there, you know, with uh, with Mekin unless she was like going in to stop her because we did see some of these Future Foundation members, you know, like we saw them fighting against the remnants of despair. And that scene on the bridge where we have the ultimate Yakuza, the ultimate swordswoman or swordsman, we also have the uh, the ultimate trainer and gymnast, you know, we had them all showing up one by one. And to me, that right there was like probably my favorite scene because those four are probably my uh, favorite remnants of despair. And just seeing them, you know, like fighting together because it was so cool, like seeing the ultimate Yakuza actually acting like a boss because we saw all these men, you know, surrounding him, you know, standing behind him like perfect soldiers. And not to mention, like, we saw him just like raise his arm and that right there was the signal to give the ultimate Superwoman, you know, like to go in there for an attack. Now, right now, I, right now, I am using their titles because these characters just have so many names and of course I do know them all but right now their names do escape me and I don't want to waste you know your guys' time you know looking them up just so I can say them properly which is why I'm just going by what their titles are but pretty much we see that that uh that after the future foundation was like done fighting the uh running of despair because right now they were still losing especially after the death of uh of uh Junko and so right now, that right there is what I find confusing. But at the same time, like we do know that Makoto, he is definitely like under the position of a, a treason because he was shielding, you know, a remnant of despair. But what we all know from two, he was doing that for all of them, which is why I have a very hard time placing this show because even though it's called Dengar Rampa Three, like to me, at least for the future side. 
it still seems like it's taking place before too. That's why I do wonder, you know, like what is going on. We definitely gotta learn more about the remnants. Oh, and also it was definitely dope to see how like all their eyes were like red. Like to me, that right there was awesome. And so we all know that back in two and like the final trial, like we all knew that they did some pretty disgusting stuff. And uh and one people who did something nasty was the um was the ultimate gymnast because we saw that like she was starving herself because we know in two she loved to eat, so that right there was like the correlation between that. But I recall in the anime she actually did look pretty fit, so that's why I do wonder like that, that, that's why I still can't help but wonder like where this show is taking place because I can understand that this right here can be like some sort of flashback but at the same time it does leave me you know kind of confused because I do know the story now if I didn't play 2 and it, it just went into this I would have no idea where to place it but, but because I do know that's why I do have some trouble like placing it but moving on from that like, we see now that we saw all the leaders of the Future Foundation, like, all the branch just like, coming together because they wanted to discuss Makoto. And so, we see now that while they were talking, like, we learned their names, and pretty much all of them are very unique characters, you know, not only in their, like, personalities, but also in the way they act and talk. And so, pretty much now, you know, they were saying how even though Makoto should be arrested or, you know, locked up or killed... He was the one who did who did defeat Junko, and not to mention he is the ultimate hope. And that right there is not something that they can like just throw away, you know, easily. And so right now there's like one theory going around where him beating Junko was like just a uh, just an act because why else would he go out to, to like hide these remnants or a remnant if it was just one person? You know, where they're like better off killing them because even though they are fighting a losing battle, these remnants are not giving up. And so, and so we see now that when Makoto did arrive, we also saw, uh, what's her name? We saw Aoi, who is definitely my favorite girl. And we also saw, uh, what's her name? Holy crap. We also saw, uh, Koku. And so right now, like, we see how they were older. And even when Makoto actually talks, you can tell now this guy's definitely grown up because his voice has gotten like a little deeper. And so right now, because of that, we see that when he got there, all of them were like looking at him at first. And we see that one guy who is like this real tough looking person, he actually handcuffed Makoto. And then we see him like giving him this cheap shot to the stomach. And that right there had enough force where it like made him you know, bleed some blood from his mouth, so, so right now we have, uh, Coco, you know, telling him that, you know, attacking him, like, while he is, while, while he can't protect himself, that right there was very cowardly, and we also have, uh, Aoi also speaking about this as well, but we see now that one of these girls, who apparently has, like, a lover or so, because we saw her, you know, feeding this guy, while he had a hit on her lap, Apparently, this guy has some, like, dagger-like weapons or knives, and we saw him, you know, throwing one right past her head. And to me, that right there made me want to kill him because you never threaten the best girl. And so, right now, after right now, I already hate these two, but we see that, you know, these two are branch leaders, so they were trying to, like, keep, like, keep them in check. And so, pretty much, there was no way that Makoto could, like, answer any questions now because he was, like, definitely hurt. So, they did call the meeting off temporarily, but, of course, they still had some questions for him that he would definitely have to answer later. And so, right now, we see that we have this, like, this nurse, I guess, or a teacher, but she definitely has some kind of, like, medical skills. She was tending to Makoto while we have Koyoko and uh, and Aoi like in the girls' bathroom and they were talking and it was definitely nice to see a much warmer side of Koyoko because even in one and kinda like in two she still came off like kinda cold but seeing her crack that smile and seeing the friendship between her and Aoi that right there was nice and so right now we have this teacher who, who Makoto actually protected at one point you know taking care of him and right now, she was asking him to get along with this guy who's pretty much like the figurehead or 
he definitely invested a lot of money into the future foundation to like keep them going and we also learned that this base is actually on on a like it's, it's, it's a it's actually on a secluded item that, that that's not on any map so do you, you would think that right there would be like helpful but at the same time in the end it proved to be you know for not and so pretty much now we see that when when that when Koyoko had left the bathroom there was like some real nervous guy who had like these bags under his eyes this guy was here for the meeting which makes him you know a branch leader but at the same time he came off like very very nervous and so pretty much we have him Koyoko and Makoto you know they were like going back to the meeting room because he he was now all fixed up so he can obviously talk but then we have Aoi in the bathroom and we see now that uh, that uh when she opened like this door because there was like this rumbling sound we saw these dead bodies you know fall and these were and these were the guards who actually had their necks broken so to me that right there was like freaking insane and so right now we have a uh, Crap, what's his name from the first name? I freaking hated this guy. So forgive me for not, you know, actually, uh, for, forgive me for not remembering a, a lot about him. But to me, in Dagon 1, he was just so useless that I was shocked that this guy came out alive at the end of it. But it's the one with, like, the crystal ball. He, he's like a psychic or something. But pretty much, he blew 300 million yen on a crystal ball. And to me, that's, like, freaking insane. But at the same time, we have, like, these attack helicopters shooting like these missiles and that right there actually you know like they they were attacking all the entrances so that way they'll be very under rubble but we see that by doing that you know that right there was like shaking shaking his tower so much that everyone was like losing their balance and that right there made him drop his crystal ball and that right there wasn't the first time that happened to him but right now he's outside so he's kind of okay but it's the people inside that tower that that we're like really worried about because we see that because they were like getting attacked like eventually, you know, like they, they were they were waiting for they, they were waiting for a status report, and not to mention they had the teacher, who seems very close to the guy who like in charge, you know, she was like trying to contact HQ so they could get some backup. But I thought because they were like these leaders, I thought this right here was their HQ because you know why why not put it on the spot where nobody should know about. But regardless. They couldn't, they could, they couldn't uh, get it up with no one, and we see now that eventually someone here had threw in like these Monokuma bombs that have released this like powerful uh, sleeping gas that was activated instantly, and we see everybody getting knocked out, and we see now that when his teacher actually went down, you know, we saw the guy with the white hair who like in charge. That was when, like, we saw him show some, like, real concern and emotion because this guy came up as a dick, you know, pretty arrogant and pretty much an, and, like, pretty much an asshole. And so, right now, they were all knocked out. And so, we see now that when they came to, or Makoto, like, we saw that they had these, uh, these, these black and white bracelets on the, like, around their wrists and they had this timer on it. And so we see now that they were in a building that looks similar to the one that they you know, that the uh, meeting was going down in. But at the same time, it was like pretty run down and pretty and pretty messed up. And so we see now that on the screen, like we hear a familiar laugh. And then finally, we, and then finally we have uh, Monokuma making his appearance. And so right now, well, when it came to Monokuma, his voice to me it does sound different. Now I play both games in Japanese, and so may and so maybe like from the anime they do have a different like voice actor or actress, but I don't recall Monokuma sounding like that. But regardless, he's now back, and we see now that once again he he wants to start a new killing game, and so of course you know they would not want. But but of course you know by them being the future foundation, there is no way that that uh they'll want to do that because they're all comrades. And we see now that when this guy with the white hair is looking around, he actually can't find that teacher that that that, that he obviously care about. And so right now he was like looking for, her, but then we see like this blood you know falling down from somewhere high up. 
And so we see now Monokuma, but then we have Monokuma saying that the killing game, it already started. And then all you see is like her dead body hanging from the chandelier. And to make things even worse, it actually broke and we see her falling. And so right now, this girl, I was definitely like suspecting her because she seemed way too nice. And normally in anime or in like anything really, when, when someone is too nice, too damn nice, there was no way you can like trust them. But she was the first one to be killed off. And I don't think this right here could like be some kind of ploy. So right now, I definitely believe that this character really is dead. Like, like there's no way this could be a fake or a body switch. But at the same time, I will say that that I was kind of expecting her because when they were showing the remnants of the sparrow on the screen earlier, she was definitely looking at them. But at the same time, because she was a teacher, maybe she did break a whole peak at one point and she did teach them. Like I like because I was definitely, you know, like I, I kept my eye on her mainly because she was too nice and some of her actions did kind of like made me raise her brow so that's why but now that she's dead and she's the first one you know to be killed off because this game it because the game was like now it's just starting i do wonder who woke up first you know just to kill her because it was definitely somewhere in that room but at the same time i don't think that any other characters that we that we uh, know from day gone one will die but pretty much that right there was like where the episode ended and and i was like I, and i definitely loved it like this uh the future side it said that it, it, it that they said that the future side will be very dark and so far they are keeping that true but also when when it came to that black guy with the high pitched voice i was just like face palming so hard and i was saying why why in the world would he do that it's just not right they even made fun of it in the show saying that his voice did not go with his body it was just creepy because it freaking is but uh for first episode very solid I'm definitely liking it so far. Like the first death, I guess you could say you could like kind of see it coming, but it was still impactful nonetheless. And not to mention, I do wonder, you know, like why in the world are the remnants back if this right here does take place after two because they should be back on that island. But but whatever. It's like so for first episode, this right here was like a solid eight because it was just that damn good. But of course, let me know what you guys thought, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, uh, and, and just so you guys know, I will be reviewing the uh, Despair side on Thursdays, and tomorrow I will be reviewing Mob 100, so be sure to like check that out. But as always, you guys take it easy, and I will see you all next time.